I would tell you that there's a player in Real Madrid's history who has scored more goals than Ronaldo Nazario, assisted more goals than David Beckham, and has won more trophies than Zinedine Zidane, who would be the first player that comes to your mind? I'll go ahead and name a player whom you won't think of. Well, maybe you will. I mean, you did click on this video and have probably read the title and seen the thumbnail by now. It's Gareth Bale. The Welsh footballer might have had a difficult and stained relationship with Real Madrid, especially during his last few seasons at the club, but there's no doubt that he has brought the team a lot of success and that he has had a big impact in their most important victories over the years. To put things into some perspective, Bale has been the deciding factor in two Champions League finals and one Copa del Rey final for Real Madrid. In the 13-14 Champions League final against Atletico Madrid, he managed to get Real Madrid ahead after a late Sergio Ramos equalizer. And in the Champions League final 17-18 against Liverpool, Bale scored the insane overhead bicycle kick goal and a long distance banger and was named finals MVP despite only getting subbed into the game in the 61st minute from coach Zinedine Zidane. And his deciding Copa del Rey goal was also a very spectacular and memorable one, with him outrunning Barcelona's defender Marc Bartra with his blistering pace from the kickoff line and scoring the match winner in the 85th minute of the game. But when talking about the footballer Gareth Bale, I often notice people disrespecting him and his legacy, especially his time at Real Madrid. He's always injured, he doesn't do enough for the club, he never learned how to speak proper Spanish, he doesn't show the right attitude and fighting spirit while under contract for Madrid and he is earning millions while relaxing on the bench, are just some of the topics people like to talk about when criticizing the Welsh footballer. But I do understand parts of that criticism. Journalists, for example, often notice him sleeping on the bench or like to write stories about Bale's lack of passion for the team. But one of his biggest controversies definitely was the national flag incident, where he was seen smiling after a game for the Welsh national team and holding a Welsh flag with his teammates that had following statement written on it. Wales, golf, pseudo society and Real Madrid in that order. Okay. Maybe not in that order, because I guess he values pseudo society videos even more than he does playing golf, but I guess you get the point. He does not care about Real Madrid. Not at all, actually. Nowadays his priorities lay elsewhere, with his future as a professional footballer seemingly heading towards the American MLS, after successfully sitting out his multi-million Real Madrid contract and becoming a free agent on the 1st of July 2022. But I just can't get over wondering what exactly went wrong in the Welshman's very successful Real Madrid career. Why isn't he being considered one of Real Madrid's icons and all-time greats, but is rather hated, booed and very underappreciated by the club and its fans? Hey guys, it's Sudo here. If you enjoy my videos, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. The support would mean a lot to me and the channel and will only further motivate me to make even better and more awesome documentaries and sports videos for you guys. Gareth Bale, born on 16th of July 1989 in Cardiff, Wales, is a professional football player who plays in attacking positions of the right wing, right forward or center forward. Crazy pace, strong physique and his insane left foot, Bale has scored bangers and insane goals not only during his time in Madrid but also in his previous years for Tottenham, which was the team that helped him rise to star level. Speed, technical abilities on the ball, dribbling and finishing, Bale had everything a good attacking player needed. But he didn't always play in an attacking position. In his early days as a professional footballer, Bale first played in Southampton on the defensive left-back position and, at the young age of 16, Bale was already proving the world that he was one of the biggest talents out there. Despite his young age, Bale had already developed into a free-kick specialist and was a real threat in front of goal. His amazing performances, combined with his evolving skills, made a couple of teams interested in signing the Welshman. Bale transferred to Tottenham in 2007 for a fee of 15 million euros. But his first two seasons for Tottenham weren't great and, while he was still showing his potential, Bale had to deal with injuries which were constantly setting him and his development as a football player back. In his third and fourth season at the club, 
the Welshman started proving how dangerous he could be when put in an attacking position, making an impact in many important games. So, the following 12-13 season, Gareth Bale started getting some more freedom and started playing up front. And that change totally paid off. He developed into one of the best right forwards on the planet and became a key player and match winner for Tottenham Hotspur, carrying them to success almost single-handedly. In that season, Bale changed his shirt from 3 to 11 and played on either the center attacking or the right forward position. So in that 2012-2013 season, Bale had played 44 games for the Hotspurs, scoring 26 goals and assisting 15. His amazing performances ended up drawing the attention of Europe's biggest clubs, with Real Madrid being one of them. Real was showing great interest in acquiring the Welshman's abilities for themselves and Perez was not taking no as an answer. Tottenham was able to negotiate a fee of a whopping 101 million euros back in 2013, which ended up being one of Madrid's biggest transfers in their history. In fact, Bale was Madrid's most expensive signing up until the 1920 season when they bought Aiden Hazard from FC Chelsea for a fee of 115 million euros. And we all know how that transfer worked out so far, but I guess that topic should be talked about in a separate video. Also, please keep in mind that paying 101 million euros for a player back in 2013 was a record-breaking sum and not just some regular fee that is being asked for with almost every talented football player, like it is nowadays. <coughs> Jack Grealish <coughs> and Manchester City. <coughs> so, as you can see, Bale joining Madrid was a big deal and Florentino Perez's idea behind Bale's transfer to Madrid was simple. He should be the counterpart to Cristiano Ronaldo who was a threat on the left flank. Bale should be the attacking force on the right, and Karim Benzema should finally mature as a striker to round up the attack as a dangerous target man in the middle. The BBC trio, yeah, they really called it the BBC, ended up being very successful together and played a crucial role in challenging Barcelona's MSN, Messi Suarez Neymar, trio in the Spanish competitions, while delivering football fans all around the world amazing El Clasicos and exciting games to watch. So, now that we understand Bale's story and his path up until joining Real Madrid, it's time that we take a deeper look into his stats and his time in Madrid. What exactly went wrong during his time in Spain, and why is Bale not getting the respect and appreciation from the fans and the board that he should be getting, especially when realizing how clutch he has been for the club in its biggest moments and most important matches? When taking a closer look at Bale's time playing in Madrid, one can see that Bale scored 106 and assisted 67 goals in 258 appearances. This equals a goal contribution every 67 minutes, which only further confirms that his time in Madrid was very successful, especially when considering that his playing time for the club has drastically fallen over the last few seasons and that he hasn't been a regular starter ever since his issues with Zinedine Zidane started back in the 17-18 season. But things weren't always as bad as they were for the Welshman during his last few years in Madrid. Of course, with his transfer breaking all previous records, Bale got heavily criticized during his early days while playing for the Spanish Giants. Fans and critics expected him to be another Ballon d'Or contester, like Cristiano Ronaldo, and they were not satisfied with his early performances, which is a pretty funny thing to talk about considering the fact that almost everywhere else in the world he would have been hailed as a superstar and one of the team's best players for his immediate impact on the pitch. But like I've said, that would have been everywhere else except for Real Madrid, because here the bar was set much higher. What's important to mention is that Bale's coach and his teammates had his back during his difficult adjusting period. For example, in an interview Cristiano Ronaldo took Gareth Bale's side completely, backing his teammate up and telling the media and critics to be a bit kinder and more patient with him. I think uh, Gareth Bale did it well. Uh, when since he arrived, he have a difficult time because he don't do it the preseason, and it's injury now. It's it's not difficult for him, but I understand. If you if you speak with him, you can see that it's very exciting to play, to help the team, to getting better and better. But it's better to leave him alone. Don't make him pressure. Do pressure to another players. Leave him alone because 
I'm sure 100 percent that they're going to do well for the for the club. We're going to help us a lot because he's a fantastic player. He's a fantastic boy, and he always want to learn. Despite that support and understanding from his new club, Bale was struggling a bit during his first few months at Real Madrid, not having the game-changing impact that the club or his fans would have wanted him to have. Adapting to Spanish football seemed a bit more difficult than expected, and critics immediately called him out, saying how he was only able to run fast, and how he couldn't really play proper football. And while this criticism was harsh, I understand where it came from. He was the most expensive transfer in football history at that point after all, so people simply expected a lot more from him on the pitch. But Bale would go on to silence these critics during the second half of the season and thereby start writing his legacy at the club. Bale slowly found his rhythm in the team and found a way to stay fit and avoid further injuries. With his coach and teammates having his back, Bale started showing up in important matches and went on to decide a Copa del Rey final by himself against Barcelona in the 85th minute with a fantastic goal, but running Barca's defender Mark Bartra in a perfectly executed counter-attack. What makes this goal one of the best Copa del Rey final goals of all time is the fact that Bale's counter-attacking sprint started from inside his own box. He then got the ball at the kickoff line and carried it all the way into his opponent's box, where he ended his counter-attack by scoring the match winner of the game. But the Welshman was just getting started. Bale seemingly got a taste for scoring in finals and important matches, so he wanted to keep his streak going in that year. One month later, Gareth Bale ended up scoring a deciding goal in the Champions League final victory against Atletico Madrid. He then kept that streak going even longer, scoring in the Club World Cup final for Real Madrid and helping his team secure a third title in that season. The Welshman appeared clutch in the biggest and most important games for Madrid, with his goals leading his team to victory even during the toughest of finals. Overall, I'd say that these stats are quite impressive, especially for a player who got heavily criticized after a slow first half season at the club. Gareth ended his first season in Madrid winning three trophies and scoring 22 goals and assisting out at 19 in 44 appearances for the club. So yeah, really good stats, actually. After finishing his first season in Madrid in style, winning three trophies and having 41 goal contributions in 44 appearances for the club, Bale would continue to dominate the football world in his position of a key player for Real over the next three seasons. There was only one issue though. More and more injuries would start setting the Welshman back from getting to the next level on the pitch. When looking at his 14-15 season, one can easily notice that Bale couldn't put up the same insane numbers as he did the previous season, and even though this was a year in which he struggled during periods, Bale still managed to win the UEFA Super Cup in addition to the earlier mentioned Club World Cup win. He ended his season with 48 appearances, 17 goals and 12 assists, and these numbers were honestly very good for a right winger, but fans and critics were once more expecting a lot more from Real Madrid's record transfer. So in the following 15-16 season, Gareth Bale was ready to once more silence his haters and critics. Despite injuries starting to pile up and setting him back every few months, Gareth Bale stepped up and proved his greatness while playing for the Spanish Giants once more. In 31 appearances for the club, he managed to score 19 goals and assist another 14, which totals a whopping 33 goal contributions in 31 games played. Those stats basically meant that Bale featuring in a game on average guaranteed him to either score or assist at least one goal for Real Madrid. And those are only his individual stats of that season. Let's not forget the two trophies he's won with his team in that year, lifting the prestigious Champions League and Club World Cup trophies. The following season, Gareth Bale and Real Madrid would continue to dominate and win in the world of football. They would win La Liga and be crowned Spanish champions, win the UEFA Super Cup, and also add a back-to-back -back Champions League and Club World Cup victory to their resume. Unfortunately, this was the first truly underwhelming season for Gareth Bale while playing for the Los Blancos. Several injuries kept him from hitting top form throughout the whole season while also limiting his appearances for Madrid. Bale ended up only featuring in 27 games in that season, scoring 9 and assisting 6 times. 
again, getting 15 gold contributions and 27 appearances from some role player or bench player would have been very good stats for sure, but it simply wasn't enough from a player of Bale's level. Quitar otro día a Bale no me gusta porque es un jugador histórico de este club, es un jugador que 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 ha hecho muchos goles importante en ese club, entonces eh, es un jugador cuando pita un jugador así está pitando la historia de este club, entonces yo creo que no me gusta, no me gustó, pero pero yo creo que el público tiene que nos apoyar y bueno, yo creo que si estamos todos juntos, eh, es que estamos todos juntos y, y vuelvo a decir, quiero que, que este Bernabéu se ponga el, el pelo de punta porque esto eso es el Bernabéu y aquí sabemos que los 90 minutos son, son muy largos, ¿no? entonces eh, yo creo que contamos con el apoyo de, del público. So naturally, fans and critics were disappointed with the Welshman's stats and the media was once more talking badly about him. So we can say that it's business as usual for the Welsh superstar by now, right? No, not really, because this time around it wasn't. Next to all these disappointed critics and fans was Real Madrid's manager and club icon Zinedine Zidane, who had just about enough of Bale's injuries and thereby inconsistence on the pitch. Many people speculate that this was a turning point in the relationship between these two, with Zidane slowly favoring the two Spanish players Asensión Isco over Bale and even changing around the 4-3-3 formation which has been played for a very long time in Madrid. Apparently, Zidane favored the two Spanish players over Bale because he liked their impact, consistency and development on the pitch. Despite the 2017-2018 season being a very good season stat-wise for the Welsh winger in which he scored 21 goals and assisted another 7 in 39 appearances, Bale had fallen out with the French club legend and at that time manager Zinedine Zidane. Apparently, Zidane didn't like Bale's lack of passion and commitment to Madrid and the fact that he never truly learned how to speak proper Spanish. Zidane also had an issue with Bale's fragile body, with several injuries holding him back from being a set starter who provides goal contributions in biggest matches. With his Ascensio developing rapidly and showing great promise when starting up front, Zidane made a tough decision to start benching Gareth Bale in their favor, but the Welshman didn't like that at all. Nonetheless, Bale stayed respectful towards the manager and the club and understood that he had fallen into a position where he had to fight for a place in the starting 11. He worked on his physique and tried to stay fit while constantly showing up for Real Madrid in that year and, just like in his previous years in Madrid, Gareth Bale showed up and reminded everyone why he should be a set starter and how good he really is. He got subbed into the Champions League final in the 61st minute and made an immediate impact in that game, just two minutes later by scoring one of the best Champions League final goals in the history of the competition with an insane overhead bicycle kick goal and helping Real Madrid regain a 2-1 lead over Liverpool. 20 minutes later, Bale would notice an error in the positioning of Liverpool's goalkeeper Loris Karius, using that error to his advantage and scoring a long distance goal and sealing the third consecutive Champions League title win for Real Madrid. Being named the finals MVP, Bale had quite a few things to say in the post-game interview, mostly showing his disappointment in the recent lack of playtime for Madrid and his desire for a guaranteed spot in his team's starting 11. Gareth, what a night, what an entrance and what a couple of goals, particularly that first one. Yeah, no, obviously uh, very disappointed not to start the game. Felt like I deserved it, but you know, uh, Obviously the manager makes those decisions and what can you do, so yeah, the best I've been doing is to come on and, and make an impact and uh, that's what I did. <laughs> you certainly did, yeah, it was one hell of a goal. That's the best goal you've ever scored, it has to be on this stage. Yeah, it has to be. Um, Champions League final, no bigger stage. Uh, yeah, just happy to get the win. Yeah, you are itching to get on, on the bench. You wouldn't have seen Zinedine Zidane's reaction to your goal. I mean, he knows about scoring a spectacular goal in the final. He was absolutely delighted for you. Yeah, no, as I said, as, when I come on, I want to make an impact. Uh, it's a team game and, yeah, obviously, at very disappointing, as I said, not to start. But when you're a sub, this it's, uh, it's a game of more than 11 players starting the game. So, uh, yeah, I have to make an impact and, uh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> and this treble triumph for Real Madrid, this is going to go down as one of the great sides in history now. Um, yeah, well, that's obviously for other people to comment on and to say. But, uh, yeah, we know what we've achieved. We know how good we've been. Um, Obviously, it was a bit disappointing in the league this year, but yeah, we, 
we'll win the Champions League. It's, uh, it turns out to be a great season. Of course, you, this side has the hunger and desire. You could tell Zinedine Zidane was unhappy and people questioned that, that Liverpool might want this more. No, we, we let everyone else speak. We know how hungry we are in the change room. We always speak about how prepared, how motivated, how determined we are and uh, showed it again today. Should we do our annual question about whether you're, you're ever going to return to the Premier League now then? <laughs> um, obviously, I, I need to be playing. I need to be playing week in, week out, and that hasn't happened this season for one reason or another. Um, I had a, about a five, six-week injury at the start of the season, and I've been fit ever since. So, um, yeah, obviously now I'll, I have to sit down in the summer and, uh, and discuss it with my agent and, yeah, take it from there. You couldn't have made a more obvious statement of intent than you did tonight here. No, but as I said, you have to, have to make an impact. I keep saying it. Obviously, as I said, I was disappointed not to start, but yeah, you have to keep working till the end. Well, that goal will be replayed forever. So well done, Gareth. Congratulations, mate. Despite his struggles and a troublesome season filled with some injuries and issues between the Welsh winger and the French coach, the season ended up being a very successful one, with Real Madrid repeating their Champions League and Club World Cup glory, winning the Spanish Super Cup and the UEFA Super Cup. Bale was also awarded the title of top scorer in the Club World Cup competition in that season. So, while I'm aware that stats only ever tell half of the story, these are quite remarkable ones actually and only speak for Bale's greatness and the importance he had for Real Madrid. After the unbelievable three-peat in the Champions League and a very successful period as head coach of Real Madrid, Zinedine Zidane decided that it was time for him to leave the club and end his coaching career for Los Blancos on a high note. His departure, paired with the departure of one of the GOATs, Cristiano Ronaldo to Juventus, left many fans and critics wondering what is next for Madrid's near future. Many predicted their downfall and the end of their dynasty, while others saw an opportunity for players like Benzema and Bale to step up and take over in a leader position. Here you are with Gareth Bale, second game, second goal. You seem unstoppable when you have spaces and you start running, but is it your best moment at Real Madrid since you arrived? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, just to, uh, to get off to an important start this season, it's, uh, yeah, to give us confidence to, to keep continuing to play well, to win games, because um, we want to win every trophy we can. So, uh, yeah, it's a good start and, uh, yeah, the team's playing well. We see you happy. What has changed since what you said after the Champions League final that you had to think and sit down with your agent and now that you feel so happy, you're scoring goals, you're starter? Uh, I'm playing football, so uh, this is the most important thing. When I play football, I'm happy and I score goals and help the team. So uh, ultimately, this is, this is the, the biggest reason. Everybody's saying Gareth Bale is the new leader of the team. Do you feel extra pressure this season? No, no extra pressure. Um, as I said before, I just want to go out, play football, enjoy my football and do the best for the team. Uh, there's 11 players on the pitch, we all need to lead together, we all need to work together and uh, that's what we're trying to do and uh, yeah, we're off to a good start this season and we hope to continue. Last question, how is the atmosphere inside the group with a new coach, Lopetegui, new season ahead of you, your new leaders now after this victory? No, of course, it's uh, obviously it's a big change but yeah, we're all really enjoying it. The, the, the atmosphere in the dressing room is very good. Obviously, a lot of the Spanish players know the manager from the national team so yeah, it's, it's, it's all settled in very well and uh, yeah, we hope to build on this performance. Nowadays, we know that Karim Benzema did just that. He accelerated his game to the next level and stepped up as the face and leader of Real Madrid. While Gareth Bale's career, on the other hand, took a big hit and went the complete opposite way. After a bad start with new coach Julen Lopetegui, management had to sack the Spanish coach and find a new replacement. But with the replacement Santiago Solari also doing poorly, Madrid's management had to go out of their way to bring a certified winner back to the Santiago Bernabeu. On March 11, 2019, Zinedine Zidane returned as head coach for the Spanish side. And with Gareth Bale already doing poorly during the first half of the season, Zidane had no intention of keeping and playing around the Welsh winger anymore. As you can see with the stats on the screen, Bale's appearances, goals and assists would only continue to shrink over the next four years for the Spanish side. But at the end of the 1920 season, Bale had already had enough of coach Zinedine Zidane's approach and the lack of respect that he was getting from the fans and critics, and thereby looking for a way out. Zidane even stated in an interview how he is not planning on keeping the Welsh attacker in his team 
and how he wishes for Madrid to let him leave the club. With Chinese Super League team Jiangsu Suning making Bale an insane offer, with his salary being £1 million per week and Bale looking forward to accepting the offer and moving on from Madrid, everything seemed to be ready for his exit. Unfortunately for Bale though, during the last phase of negotiations, the deal and transfer to the Chinese Super League collapsed due to Florentino Perez and Real Madrid deciding to ask for a transfer fee at the last minute. They made it clear that they wouldn't let him leave on a free transfer after all. And honestly, to some degree I understand their reasoning and why they wouldn't let a player like Bale leave the club without getting any transfer fee for him at all. But at the same time, I don't understand why you would want to keep a very, very expensive player like Bale in the club when your own head coach said how he isn't planning on playing him and how he wishes for the player to leave by tomorrow, if at all possible. After the failed transfer to China, the relationship between Gareth Bale and Real Madrid would only continue to get worse. Not only would he start less and less games, but he would also play less and less minutes in general. Bale and his agent would go on in several interviews to voice their frustration in how his transfer was handled and how he isn't enjoying his time in Madrid anymore, especially since head coach Zinedine Zidane did not give him the place in his team that Bale felt he had earned. So, after an unsuccessful end to his 1920 season, where he was only featured in 20 games, scoring 3 goals and assisting 2, Bale was loaned out to Tottenham to play under Jose Mourinho in the 2020-2021 season. And even though it took him a while to get going, Bale quickly found his form and ended up playing a good season back in the Premier League, scoring 16 goals and assisting 3 times in 34 appearances for the Spurs. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be back. I um... Yeah, obviously love this club with all my heart. I've had great memories here and uh, yeah, know a lot of people at the club. So yeah, it's great to come back, see familiar faces and um, yeah, just have that, that buzz back. I think it was time for a change. I wanted a change well, for a little while, but obviously I hadn't been able to materialise. But um, yeah, this club means so much to me. It's given me my opportunity. It's been some amazing memories here in the past and um, I felt like it was a good time to come back. I feel like the club's still going in a great direction and um, with the new stadium, obviously the training ground was here just as I left, but um, yeah, the club's going in a great direction and I want to be a part of it again. I, I don't think it's any more pressure. I can't really get much more pressure on my shoulders. Every game I play, everybody has the eagle eye on me. So um, yeah, no matter where I play, there's going to be pressure. So that's, that's nothing new, but um, I just want to come here. I want to enjoy my football. I want to, want to play football. I want to... Yeah, do as best I can for this club. Had you stopped enjoying your football? Um, yeah, to a certain extent. In, in Madrid it was yeah, a bit flat for a while, um, which I think everyone can see from the outside. So you, you can tell when players are not happy, they're not. When you're not happy, it's difficult to play at your, at your highest level. So um, yeah, I'd wanted to change for a little while and, and now I'm able to get it. I feel energised again, feel happy, and um, that always leads to good performances from me normally. So You've always been true to yourself. You're not somebody who seeks the limelight. You don't court attention, do you, by your own admission. Yet you moved to an extraordinary club for a world record fee at the time, where I think it's fair to say the scrutiny, there's scrutiny at every club, but unlike any other in the world. What was that like for you, given your personality? Um, yeah, it was, it was a different experience, a different um, it was different from what I'm used to, um, there's no denying that, but uh, yeah, it was one of those that you just had to kind of yeah, take on the shoulders. As you say, I'm, I'm very quiet, I try to keep myself just as normal as I can, keep myself away from the cameras, the media and, and stuff, and maybe that's what they didn't like over there. You go for a big fee, they, they expect these Galacticos to do everything, and yeah, by me being me and not wanting to do those things, that's maybe why they, they didn't uh, didn't liked me so much but um no it's it's a part and part i knew what i was getting myself in for and um yeah it's uh, it is what it is and uh, i'm happy what i achieved there but as i said now i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to the future and and being here at tottenham um you just grow up i think you're obviously going into a different culture a different country i've had to grow up as as a person never mind a footballer and um yeah you just learn how to to deal with the situations that you're in obviously i've been in immense pressure situations. I've had people 
um, on the pitch whistling in the stadium to me. So yeah, I've, I've just learned how to to deal with those type of things to kind of yeah not take it too seriously, take it too much to heart, and yeah, just get on with it. It's it's football something that you love doing and you just need to, to give your best and sometimes that's all you can do. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just part and part of it. I think you just get on with it. I think as a youngster growing up, you just want to play football. You don't think about everything that comes with it. So um, yeah, for me, yeah, I just just try and try and play football. That's all I can do and everything else that's said externally is, is out of my control. So um, as I said, I have no regrets of what I've done, whatever anyone else has said that's up to them I, ha I know my opinion of myself and, and my family know exactly what I am so uh, yeah that's all I'm worried about I'm someone who more is thinking about the now and the future rather than the past I guess when I finish then you can look back and and see what's happened but um, yeah I know what I've won I know what I've achieved I know how I've played but my career is still going on and I don't want to go to the past too much because the past is the past, the future is, is what's most important at the moment, so yeah, that's kind of my mindset. But the loan deal would end, and Bale would unwillingly have to return to Madrid. I mean, his past behaviour has shown how little he cared about playing for Real Madrid and where his priorities lied, with Wales and golf being top priorities and Madrid being the last on the list. But Florentino Perez kept pushing for his return to Los Blancos with the president still acknowledging Bale's talent and clutch performances in some of Madrid's most important games and never truly agreeing with the way Zidane handled the whole Bale situation, even voicing his disappointment about their relationship on a couple of occasions. But Zidane had once again stepped down as coach and the new head coach appointed was one Gareth Bale was very familiar with. Carlo Angelotti, for whom he already played during his prime, was once again appointed as head coach and some people speculated that this might exactly be what Bale and his career needed to potentially take off again. Unfortunately though, Gareth Bale was way past caring about the club or wanting to try and prove Real's fans and critics his worth any longer. His carefree and ungrateful attitude towards the club continued. Bale didn't care enough about being featured in games any longer, and he told the club and coach that he wasn't available to play due to injuries setting him back. Now, I can't speak on whether those excuses were completely true or not, but it gets difficult believing Bale telling the truth when he would then go on to feature for a Wales national team games and training sessions literally the next day after being unavailable for Madrid. So, in the 21-22 season, after featuring 7 games and scoring 1 goal for his team, his time in Madrid had come to an end. Florentino Perez had enough of the carefree golfer and his unprofessional attitude. Rumors are that from that point onwards, he had forbidden Angelotti to feature the Welshman in any of Real Madrid's future games, showing the world that once and for all, their stained relationship had broken down completely. So, Bale wasn't seen playing for Madrid anymore and would only feature in the few national team games in that year, which was a very disappointing end to a stat-wise truly remarkable time in Madrid. It's, it's obvious it's a challenging time for you, Madrid, however, um, you know, you, you manage sort of your, your personal side from your professional side out there. But how good is it for you to be back in, in Wales? Because we saw, see, when you joined up the squad on, on Sunday, everyone picks up the photographs, you're smiling. Now, it doesn't mean that you, do, you never smiled before, but <laughs> how sort of good is it for you to be back in an environment like this with Wales? No, I think everyone knows how much I love coming away with Wales. Um, yeah, it's nice, I guess, to be back at a place where you're a bit more appreciated and and supported by your fans no matter what. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, yeah, happy to be back, happy to be concentrated on these two games and, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. A player of your stature that's saying it's lovely to feel appreciated, it, it rings you know, an alarm bell in my thing. Is, is, that, is, is that maybe how you feel you're viewed within in Real Madrid, that you're not appreciated, maybe both on and off the pitch there? Um, I guess it is what it is. Like things have been said in the press, things have been said by certain people. But um, yeah, I, I'm just focused now on Wales. Um, yeah, we have two big games coming up. This is like the start for us now to, to prepare for the Euros next year. From, from a Wales point of view, is just how concerning is it sort of for you? Is that you maybe haven't had the game time in your legs? You know, given you've, you've had a, a probably well-deserved holiday right now, but 
that lack of game time, how much of a concern is that when you come into an international environment? Um, I feel like I've, I've actually found a, a way to keep myself really fit now if I'm not playing, so um, I'm hoping it's not going to affect me too much. Um, as I said, I've been working really hard um, on holiday and making sure I've been putting in the yards and, and been putting in the training and to get myself prepared for this and we've had a couple of days training now so um, yeah obviously I'm not going to be 100% but I, I'd like to think that I'm in better shape than I've than I've ever been where I haven't been playing before so um, yeah we'll see how it goes Thursday and uh, yeah we'll take it from there. I, I asked the manager just before I spoke to you is is it is remarkable how you manage to separate what's going on with your club life and then you come into the country environment. I think the first thing he said, he's strong-willed, he's strong-minded. Is that, is that how you sort of see yourself? Because certainly that's the, that's the vision that you're giving to everyone else when you come into to the environment. You know, how do you separate club and country? Um, very simple. I'm, I'm, I, when I come here, I'm, as I said, I'm, I feel very happy, I feel very comfortable, I feel welcome. So... Um, yeah, whatever goes on at Madrid goes on at Madrid. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't really affect me, to be honest. I've had uh, plenty of experience to deal with it. Um, it is what it is. But yeah, when I come here, I feel, feel very settled, very happy. Everyone knows how passionate I am to play for Wales. And, and uh, yeah, I come here excited to play football and, and motivated to, to do well and yeah, get back playing football where, where, I, where I belong. What, what is going to happen at Real Madrid? Do you know? Are you staying or are you looking to leave? Um, I think the club needs to answer that question because, as I said, I tried to leave last year. They blocked everything at the last second, so um, it was a project that I was excited for last year, but, yeah, it, it didn't materialise. So, um, and there's been other instances where we've, we've tried to go, but the club won't allow it or they won't, they've done something. So, yeah, I guess it's, it's for the club. Um, what can I say? I, I want to play football. I'm, I'm still motivated to play football. So, yeah, I, I, I guess it's on the club, really. I can't really do much. They're in control of everything. And, uh, yeah, well, I, can, I have a contract. All I can do is carry on what I'm doing and uh, hopefully something comes up. But from what I'm taking that is that if a move were to, happen, were to become a, a, a possibility, you would like to go. You would as like I, a move. As I said, I, I want to be playing football. I'm, I'm still, I'm only 31, but I feel I'm, I'm in great shape still. And uh, yeah, I feel like I have a lot to give. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, as I said, it's in the club's hands and yeah, they, they make things very difficult, to be honest. At the end of the day, Bale still earned a lot of money while winning a bunch of trophies during his last few years in Madrid ending his time at the club with 258 appearances, 106 goals, 67 assists and 20 trophies to his name. He is also one of the few players that have won 5 Champions League trophies in their career and has proven time and time again how talented and great he can be when given the freedom and trust to do what he does best on the pitch. I just think that it's quite sad that the player of his talent had to go through all the troubles and disrespect that he got during his last few years in Madrid, from the coach, the fans and the critics. But to be fair, the fans still gave him a decent goodbye during their Champions League celebrations in the Santiago Bernabeu and now what's left for Bale is to continue giving his all for the Welsh national team while beginning a new and possibly final chapter in his football career playing for Los Angeles FC in the American MLS. Whatever you might think about the Welshman's time at Madrid, there is no denying that he had a huge impact for the club in moments where it mattered most, scoring clutch game-winning goals in big and important games, while also forming a deadly striking trio up front with Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim Benzema. Despite missing so many games for the club due to various injuries and not being featured a lot in the starting squad in his last few seasons for the club, Bale's total stats for Real Madrid remain remarkable. And yes, I'm aware that stats only ever tell half of the story, but when the stats are this great, can you really shame a player like him? Can you really say that Gareth Bale is not an underappreciated icon and club legend of Real Madrid? It's also very important to remember that many of his goals came in clutch moments and big games and that they were crucial for Real Madrid's victories over the years. So overall, I'd say that Bale deserves way more respect than he was getting in the recent years. He still got a nice farewell during the Champions League celebrations in the Bernabeu from the fans, 
but in my opinion, he never really enjoyed the respect and appreciation that a player of his talent and skill should have gotten. I'd say that people will always have a bit of a discussion when talking about Bale's time and legacy in Madrid. Some will always remember his lack of desire and focus during his last few seasons at the club. Others will bring up his stats and achievements, defending and honoring his footballing career and his victorious years at Madrid. Whatever people might end up agreeing on, I think that all of us can easily say that his transfer to Real Madrid and his time at the club was very successful and that the 101 million euro deal worked out pretty good for Real Madrid and Gareth Bale, with 20 trophies won over the span of 8 years at the club. Once more guys, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me that you support me and this channel as much as you do. And of course, comment down below, what do you think about Gareth Bale? And what do you think about his time in Real Madrid? And do you think anything could have been done better from both sides, obviously? I can't wait to read all of your comments and make the next awesome documentary for you guys. See you soon.